These kinds of mass shootings never happen with the kind of frequency that happen in America. Why? Why are we willing to live with this carnage? The country mourns after a gunman opens fire, murdering innocent children and teachers inside a Texas elementary school. The latest developments straight ahead. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Why are you here? If not to solve a problem as existential as this. This isn't inevitable. These kids weren't unlucky. This only happens in this country and nowhere else. Nowhere else do little kids go to school thinking that they might be shot that day. Nowhere else do parents have to talk to their kids as I have had to do about why they got locked into a bathroom and told to be quiet for five minutes just in case a bad man entered that building. Nowhere else does that happen except here in the United States of America and it is a choice. Thank you for joining us tonight. Lawmakers already demanding answers and action after an elementary school massacre in Texas. Flags at the White House lowered to half staff this evening in honor of those lives lost. Here is what we know about those victims so far. According to the Texas Department of Public Safety, a total of 21 people were shot and killed inside Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. 19 of them were students and now two were adults. So this school is located about 80 miles west of San Antonio. With the updated death toll, today's shooting has now become the third deadliest school shooting in U.S. history, behind only Sandy Hook in 2012 and Virginia Tech in 2007. Excluding today, there have been at least 38 shootings in K-12 through schools, colleges, and universities in the first five months of this year. As for the alleged shooter, he has been identified as this man, 18-year-old Salvador Ramos. Texas Governor Greg Abbott says he acted alone and used a handgun and potentially, he says, a rifle as well. They say he was shot and killed by responding police officers. Jason Allen has the latest. An army of local and federal authorities converged on Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas this afternoon. Police say an 18-year-old gunman went on a shooting rampage, killing at least 18 children. President Biden addressed the tragedy from the White House tonight. There's a lot we don't know yet. There's a lot we do know. The parents who will never see their child again, never have them jump in bed and cuddle with them. <clears throat> parents will never be the same. To lose a child is like having a piece of your soul ripped away. The Texas governor identified the shooter as Salvador Ramos. He's from the area and died at the scene. It's believed that he abandoned his vehicle and entered into uh, the Robb Elementary School in Uvalde with, with a handgun, and he may have also had a rifle. Local officials say the gunman also injured several others, including students and adults. Two officers responding to the scene were hit by gunfire. Uh, families are being notified and we are providing services to them. We do want to keep all our families in their prayers. I hope you do as well. The local civic center is now a reunification center for parents and their children. About 600 students attend Robb Elementary. Their school year was set to end Thursday. Jason Allen, CBS News, Dallas. And President Biden has ordered flags at all public buildings be lowered to half staff to honor the victims. And as always, as we learn more about this shooting, the victims, the shooter, and the likely political fallout, be sure to stay with News 3 Now and Channel3000.com for any and all updates. And just today, the FBI also put out a new report showing active shooter incidents are on the rise. The report shows there was a 50% jump in incidents from 2020 to 2021. The FBI also reported an emerging trend last year involving roving active shooters. That's when gunmen shoot in multiple locations locations either in the same day or in various places over several days. Locally yesterday, Madison police said this gun, which a La Follette student brought to school, was real.
but now they say it's not, saying it is in fact an airsoft gun. Sergeant Kimba too with the Madison Police Department says generally more time and a closer look can help officers make that determination. He isn't commenting on this particular investigation, but he's giving us a better idea of how police handle these types of cases. He says officers are trained to treat any type of gun they encounter as a real weapon, at least at first, until they know for sure. Until we actually have a kind of up close inspection of the weapon itself to determine again, how does it function um, for all intents and purposes at first glance, at first blush, it appears to be a real weapon. There are some clues that tell you it's an airsoft gun, including the gun sights and the magazine officials with MPD also initially reported the gun was stolen, but it's unclear if that is still the case. A little rain across much of the state at this hour. Let's get a look at our certified most accurate forecast now with meteorologist Dana Fulton. Dana? It is dry on the patio right now, but areas west of Madison already seen some steady showers over the last few hours. It's been a little bit of a soggy evening in Grant County and parts of Richland and Iowa counties. In Iowa right now, the state, they've had steady rainfall throughout the evening. Some areas along I-80 picking up close to an inch and a quarter of accumulation already this evening. We've just had some spotty light showers passing through and this will generally be the scene for us overnight as the steadier rainfall will hold off until tomorrow morning. Temperatures today in the mid 60s for afternoon highs. It won't be quite as cool outside for tomorrow, but still a bit below average. Highs will land in the upper 60s with scattered showers and thunderstorms, breezy conditions, wind speeds about 10 to 20 miles per hour with wind gusts getting even higher for us during those thunderstorms. Now tomorrow's definitely going to be the soggy day, but we still have a rain chance on Thursday and a few more opportunities for showers as we look ahead to Memorial Day week but we'll time out some of this rain in just a few minutes. Dana, thank you. New tonight, there is vandalism, and then there's what happened in Stoughton this week. Police there received about 40 complaints of slashed tires and graffiti on cars, and this all took place in this area, the southwestern section of the city, during the early morning hours today. Brad Hamilton is live in Stoughton tonight. Brad? Charlotte, people describe this as both strange and stunning as this vandalism really just kind of happened and it shocked everyone here. But there is a strange twist to this that's actually making this community feel a little bit closer together. Josh Tweet's van could use a new tire today, something that he had to find out about through a message from a police officer. He was just wanting to let us know that he had noticed the tire slash. So I was on my way to work and didn't re even realize it until he had called. After checking online, Tweet quickly found out that he was not alone, as there were other complaints of slashed tires and garages marked with graffiti all around his Stoughton neighborhood. Saw other people were hit too, so just a little surprised by, you know, just the random randomness of it all. Stoughton police received around 40 complaints in total, and as we walked around the streets of the city's southwest side, the damage was obvious, and it's leaving folks like Tweet frustrated. It's not a simple fix, and, you know, uh, things can get repaired, and um, but it just takes a little bit of time to to go through the hoops of calling insurance. But here to fix some of that frustration is Trent Nelson. His repair center, Eli's Auto Shop, is offering a deal to help people whose tires were slashed. We knew we wanted to do something to help, so we put a post out on there. Uh, we'd be willing to help out with some tire replacements. Nelson says the decision to offer a discount tires replaced at cost was simple. The people of Stoughton have been there for him, and in return, he wants to be there for them. We've been open since 2013. I was born and raised here, so uh, I, I like to keep Stoughton the, the way it is where everybody helps out everybody. And it might make life just a little bit easier for folks like Tweet, who's just hoping that whoever did this stops immediately. I just wish you could find other ways to have fun. Stone police are asking for any and all video evidence to help in this investigation. And if you do have that video evidence, make sure to call Stoughton Police's tip line. Brad, thank you. New tonight, an Iraqi national living in Ohio arrested today and facing federal charges related to an alleged plot to assassinate former President George W. Bush. The Justice Department charged him with aiding and abetting the attempted murder of a former United States official. According to the DOJ, he's alleged to have planned to smuggle four Iraqi nationals as part of the plot and driving them to the neighborhood of Bush's residence in Dallas. One of the major companies at the heart of the baby formula shortage 
says it plans to restart its plant next week. Today, Abbott Nutrition said it'll restart production at its facility in Sturgis, Michigan on June 4th, but the company does not expect the first batches of new formula to be available until around June 20th. Abbott shut down its Sturgis plant back in February after FDA investigators found bacteria in several areas inside that plant. This led to a nationwide recall of its baby formula products. All of the $2.3 million stolen from the Wisconsin Republican Party by hackers just before the 2020 presidential election has now been recovered. The party chairman says the investigation is ongoing. The money had been taken from the account the party was using to help try to reelect President Trump. About two weeks before the election, Trump went on to lose Wisconsin to President Biden by fewer than 21,000 votes. Dane County announcing today it is giving local schools more resources to address students' mental health needs. $1.5 million will be used to provide mental health or substance use treatment services in school buildings. The county will hear proposals from local districts about how the money will be spent. Data from the 2021 Dane County Youth Assessment showed that rates of depression, anxiety, and thoughts of suicide are on the rise amongst local middle and high school children. Since launching its capital fundraising campaign late last year, more than 400 donors and businesses have donated to the Center for black excellence and culture to make the concept a reality. The center has now raised more than $20 million for the project's construction. The goal is to reach $36 million with hopes of the project breaking ground later this year or early next year on the city's south side. As of now, the center is slated to open in 2024. Well, check this out. The tallest building in Chicago now reopened after a makeover. The Willis Tower, originally built in the 1970s. Many of us know it better as the Sears Tower. Got a $500 million renovation over the past five years. This week, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot cut the ribbon at the grand reopening ceremony. The 110-story Willis Tower was updated to be more environmentally friendly. Even got a new rooftop public park that's home to several bee colonies. The Willis Tower will soon have shops and restaurants and a permanent art installation. Still to come tonight, two of the area's biggest names teaming up to help save you some gas money. Plus, the nation's weather experts are predicting another very active hurricane season. We'll have those numbers when we come back. Save big on quality Smith Brothers furniture at Wanaki Furniture ETC, the number one Smith Brothers dealer in the nation. That's right, for square footage, we sell more Smith Brothers than anyone else. So let our design experts customize a look for you during the Smith Brothers factory authorized sale at Wanaki Furniture ETC. It's always time for Papa Murphy's. And now you can get any medium two-topping pizza for just $6.99. Now that's meaty yum. Papa Murphy's, we make great pizza so you can make the pizza great. Order online today at papamurphys.com. Family-owned Brothers Maine knows Memorial Day is a time to gather with loved ones. Celebrate this special time with special deals and free delivery on appliances from top brands like Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid. Feel like family. Brothers Maine. I'm Rebecca, and you might know me from reality TV. And this was my stubborn body fat that I just couldn't get rid of. But then I went to Sonobello and they permanently removed my body fat in just one visit. It is so intensely gratifying for one visit to make this big of a change. It's amazing. Sonobello's board certified surgeons use micro laser technology to safely target and remove your diet resistant fat cells permanently on your stomach, hips and thighs, back, and so much more. It feels incredible to look down and it's flat. Thank you again, Sonobello. I'm so happy. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly. Call 1-800-595-1532 or go to sonobello.com. Love that Chevy Blazer. That's our next SUV. Love that Equinox. That's our next SUV. Nice Trailblazer. It was love at first sight. What? The Chevy family of SUVs. Find new options. Find new roads. It's Chevy Sport Utility Spring. Well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing or get a $1,000 cash allowance on all 2022 Equinox models. Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in Wisconsin. Save big on quality Smith Brothers furniture at Wanaki Furniture ETC, the number one Smith Brothers dealer in the nation. That's right, for square footage, we sell more Smith Brothers than anyone else. So let our design experts customize a look for you during the Smith Brothers factory authorized sale at Wanaki Furniture ETC. 
Tomorrow, we're going to help you sharpen your water safety skills for summer. Plus, answer our question of the day, and you could win these Summerfest tickets. Plus, I'm tracking the incoming rain. Who's seeing it and for how long? Join us with your first one forecast tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Welcome back. Starting tomorrow, two of the area's biggest names will offer a program to help you save on gas. Festival Foods and Quick Trip will partner to offer one cent off per gallon for every $10 spent at festival. So that means every $100 spent, you'll get 10 cents off a gallon. If you, to participate, you just got to pick up a Festival Foods gas rewards card at festival locations throughout Wisconsin. Operation Fresh Start hosting an open house at its Madison Eastside location today. Organizers are using it as a way to open their doors once again to the community following COVID and showcasing how the nonprofit helps empower young adults to build their futures. Over the past few years, OFS has added several new programs helping to address some of the county's largest barriers for local teens and young adults. Senator Melissa Agard hosting a film screening inside the state capitol today. Two films were featured, one called Transaster and the other titled Make-A-Wish. Both films were written and produced by local students with the assistance of the Children's Film Academy of Madison. A blood donation center celebrated a new location today with a ribbon cutting on Mineral Point Road. Impact Life collects blood for local hospitals, in fact, about 125 of them in the Midwest. Officials there say the event comes as they look ahead to what will likely be a decrease in donations because of Memorial Day weekend and the first weeks of summer. The 2022 Atlantic hurricane season officially begins next week, and today the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration announced it will be another busy year. Now, scientists predict up to 21 named stormed, as many as six could be major hurricanes. Michael George has the details. From the Gulf to the Northeast, last year's Hurricane Ida left a lasting and devastating impact. It destroyed Nicholas Danette's restaurant in Lafitte, Louisiana. While he rebuilds, he's running his business from a barge. Now in the face of what scientists say will be the seventh above average hurricane season in a row. I'm nervous. I'm nervous because every seems like we go five steps forward. 10 steps back. With 70% confidence, NOAA predicts 14 to 21 named storms in 2022. 6 to 10 could become hurricanes, and 3 to 6 could be major hurricanes, packing winds of 111 miles per hour or higher. It's crucial to remember that it only takes one storm to damage your home, neighborhood, and community. NOAA scientists say the increased activity anticipated this hurricane season is due to climate change. Specifically, warmer than average sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean and Caribbean Sea. FEMA's administrator Deanne Criswell tells us recent storms like Ida intensify quickly and hover over land much longer than in previous years. We're seeing more billion dollar disasters year after year and that's not just homes, that's the infrastructure that's damaged. The Federal Emergency Management Agency encourages all Americans to know their risk. That includes people who don't live along the coast. They say having an evacuation plan in place could save your life. Life. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Well, looking ahead, if you're heading out of town for Memorial Day weekend, you're going to have a lot of company. Memorial Day weekend, the unofficial start to summer, of course. AAA estimating 39.2 million people will be traveling this weekend. Doesn't that sound like fun? It's especially good news, though, for the airline industry with estimates that air travel will be up by 25% over a year ago. That's pretty close to what it was pre-pandemic. We'll see things warm up a bit by then, but maybe more rain along the way. Here's Dana Fulton. We do have the chance to see some more showers and thunderstorms, but you're right. Having warmer temperatures, more mm -hmm. mild temperatures, it'll help the unofficial start to summer kind of feel a little more summer-like for us. Now, right now, it's still a bit cool. We're watching these showers build into the area. We've had steady rainfall for our westernmost counties over the last few hours in Dane County and Brock County. A few isolated showers passing through the steady rainfall in Iowa. That already adding up to about an inch and a half of accumulation for some areas in the middle of the state. For tomorrow, we do have a marginal risk for some strong to severe thunderstorms. Pretty minor, only one on a scale to five. But 
the main concern with some of those storm chances in the afternoon is that we could see some really strong wind gusts with it. Wind gusts up to about 30, 35 miles per hour for us with some of those thunderstorms. Now, showers expected throughout the day. A little bit of a soggy Wednesday on tap. As we look ahead to the weekend and the start of next week, we get warmer temperatures. We start climbing up into the 80s and stay in the 80s for a few days. Next week, we'll also come along with a few more shower and thunderstorm chances when we start to see temperatures in the mid 80s consistently. Usually comes along with more rain chances or more thunderstorm chances. This warm front lifting overhead as the system drags showers and storms throughout the Midwest. As that warm front passes tomorrow, we'll have steady showers throughout the morning and then warmer temperatures expected late in the day. In fact, our high temperatures for the day will be in the late afternoon or early evening. Overall, we'll have a cloudy sky tonight with a chance for some showers. Most of that rain really developing during the morning commute tomorrow. Scattered showers expected throughout the morning and early afternoon. Notice how these temperatures still climbing at about 5, 6, 7 o'clock. We're climbing up through the 60s for us. Showers throughout the evening with high temperatures late in the day in the upper 60s. For Thursday, we'll be mostly cloudy outside with the chance for showers and thunderstorms mainly in the evening as a cold front swings through. Some of those showers could bring some heavier rainfall also late in the evening on Thursday before everything pulls off to the east and gives us sunshine for Friday. Overall totals landing in that one and a half to two inch range similar to what we're watching right now for parts of Iowa. Again, that's over the course of about 48 hours, so it won't become a, a total washout for us, but it's going to be a little soggy outside by the end of the day on Thursday. High temperatures will be in the upper 60s, so a little bit below average, but not quite as cool as we were today. Breezy outside with sustained winds in that 10 to 20 mile per hour range, but some wind gusts could pick up a little bit more with some of those thunderstorm chances. Rain for Wednesday and Thursday, high temperatures in the upper 60s. We're back to sunshine on Friday with high temperatures in the upper 60s. By Saturday and Sunday, that warming trend really starts to kick off. We're in the mid to upper 70s on Saturday and in the 80s on Sunday. We'll stay in the 80s for Memorial Day Monday. Notice each afternoon comes along with a chance for showers and thunderstorms. Again, it won't be a total watch out, but uh, we might keep an eye on the radar with so many outdoor plans expected for this weekend. For the middle of next week, temperatures still stay in the mid to low 80s. By the end of next week, we pull back to the 70s. Overnight lows also expected to pull up through the 60s for us heading into the start of June. And coming up in sports, high honors for Hillary. The award she took home and the list she joins of former Badgers to win it as well. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. <laughs> This summer, Prime Rib is the star. Bite into the new Primal Angus Stick Burger at Hardee's. See Jurassic World Dominion in theaters June 10th. I know you want to leave me, but I refuse to let you go. Ain't Too Proud is a celebration that brings the audience to its feet. Ain't Too Proud to be, as you know it. The Grammy-winning songs. The Tony-winning movies. Ain't Too Proud. The life and times of the Temptations. At Overture Center, June 14th through 19th. Tickets at Overture.org. When you drive a Honda, the adventures go on and on. Follow your adventures with the rugged power of Honda. The brand owners are calling the most fun to drive. Hurry into a local Honda dealer where new vehicles are arriving daily. They're here. Okay. There's no way we're paying for all those medical bills. Should we talk about a settlement? How about we cut the car payments down? We might want to think about this. Look, just get them to sign. This offer's more than fair. Sir, it's the law offices of Hubie and Abraham. Tell them you mean business. Call 800-800-5678. QP and Abraham. You can handle this one. It's Wow Wednesdays at hy V. This Wednesday, get six packs of Pepsi products. Only $1.48. Cheers.
Cheez-It Snack Crackers, only $1.88. Bolt House Farms Baby Carrots, only 99 cents. And hy V Fish Market Cooked Shrimp, only $4.99. Wednesday only. For more ways to save on hundreds of items every day at hy V, check out our monthly catalog, our weekly ad, and scan the QR code to visit hy Deals.com for even more deals. In Wisconsin, everything's gotten so expensive because America's too dependent on China. So we sure know phony baloney policies when we see them. Senator Ron Johnson voted against cracking down on China with higher tariffs and tougher trade deals, and even voted against punishing China for manipulating its currency. No wonder everything keeps going up and up and up. Senator Johnson, stop making it easier on China and tougher on us. Traffic is horrible. Great. Time for another one of these. Find into the new Primal Burrito or Biscuit with Prime Rib at Hardee's. See Jurassic World Dominion in theaters June 10th. For the fourth straight year, Madison College Baseball will end their season in the Division II JUCO World Series after winning their regional tournament. Now the Wolfpack earned the two seed in the bracket and will open up play on Sunday. And for this team, from the start, it's been World Series or bust. But they're not satisfied on just getting to Oklahoma. They want to win it all, and they believe they can because their experience and confidence to get the job done. I think it was more of an expectation for us going into the season um, with the amount of returns we had and, you know, the level of talent of this team uh, to make it back to Oklahoma. Our nerves are going to be settled for sure going in. Unlike last year, we lost our first game. Nerves got to us a little bit. Uh, this year, I think we're confident in ourselves and our ability, and uh, we know what to expect down there when we get there. Brewers' 11-game road trip continued tonight on the West Coast. Crew taking on the Padres in Game 2 of their series. This one currently going on in the fifth, tied at one. The Badgers and the Lot Impact Trophy Award go hand in hand. Jim Leonard and Chris Borland were finalists for the award, while J.J. Watt won it in 2010. Nick Herbig is looking to be the next Wisconsin product to do so, and he's off to a good start. The junior outside linebacker has been named the trophy's watch list. The last season, he racked up 14 and a half tackles for loss and nine sacks. For the fourth straight season, Giannis has been named first-team All-NBA. The Milwaukee big man averaged a career-high 29.9 points per game while shooting 55% from the field. This season, Giannis became the Bucks' all-time scoring leader and the franchise's leader in block shots. On the ice, Hillary Knight has been named the Bob Allen Women's Player of the Year after leading U.S. Olympic team in scoring. Knight, who's UW's all-time leading scorer, scored six goals and ten points to help lead the United States to a silver medal. She's the fourth Badger to take home the award, joining Jesse Vetter, Megan Duggan, and Abby Rock. A little over a week after winning the region's tradition tournament during his comeback tour on the links, Steve Stricker has to push the pause button on for the weekend. The Edgerton native had to withdraw from the senior PGA championship after testing positive for COVID on Friday. The AmFam champ tees off in 17 days. We're back after this. When the family can't get enough of your signature dish, get everything you need with Pick and Save Free Pickup with no surprise fees. So start your cart today. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Summer's here, and it's time to refresh your space, indoor or out. Get an incredible 25% off Slumberland low prices during our huge memorial sale at Slumberland. Explore our comfortable living rooms, bedrooms, dining rooms, patio, and more. Pay no interest for five years and get free doorstep shipping. Are you sleeping in pain but dread mattress shopping? Come to Slumberland, where each bed is rated for back support and softness. It takes all the guesswork out of finding your perfect bed. It's like I'm downloading in slow motion. Wish we had better internet. That's right, it's me, Charlie. Wish specialist for Spectrum. Let's get that wish granted. How? Spectrum internet delivers speeds of 200 megabits for a stronger connection on all your devices. Here, here, yeah, and here. Plus, get a free modem and free desktop security to keep your kids safe online. Get Spectrum internet for $49.99 a month. Call 833-768-4999. Why do we need all these remotes? I wish our shows were in one place. Spectrum TV makes it easy to find your favorites. Plus, you'll have access to over 85,000 titles. 
on demand. And with the free Spectrum TV app, you can watch live sports, news, and more on any device, anywhere. Get Spectrum TV for $49.99 a month. Call 833-768-4999. I wish we didn't have a contract. Granted. Oh, he's good. Switch to Spectrum Internet or TV or get them both for $49.99 a month each. All with no contracts. Call 833-768-4999. Elevate the look of any living space with 11% off everything at Menards. Dutch Boy Platinum Plus Paint features excellent stain blocking power and durability to stand up to what life throws at it. All Dutch Boy interior paint is 11% off. Find your dream floors with Shaw. From soft and luxurious carpet to durable laminate flooring and waterproof vinyl plank. Get the perfect look with 11% off all Shaw flooring now at Menards. Dude, great ride. Right? This Silverado keeps me connected and in control. And this touch screen is my command center. Uh. Hmm. My command center. The 2022 Silverado LT. Find new control. Find new roads. Very well-qualified buyers can get 1.9% financing on all 2022 Silverado 1500 pickups. Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in Wisconsin. With the Pick and Save app, you can get personalized coupons on top of weekly sales. All for prices that are lower than low. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Trust the First Born Weather Team for your most accurate forecast. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. And finally tonight, we actually have an update to a story we told you about about a month ago. One of the original blue and white check gingham dresses worn by Judy Garland in The Wizard of Oz is set to be auctioned off today. But now there's a battle over who really owns the dress. So this auction was put on hold at last minute. A judge put it on hold until it can be figured out who exactly owns this. Thing. So here's the skinny on this. Catholic <laughs> University is trying to auction this off. To raise money. To raise money. It's supposed to fetch like a million dollars, and they're going to try to build a new... Oh, no, they're, they're going to um, get a new teacher with this, a new oh. professor, the okay? Judy Garland but, uh, logo there. But the former... Um, the dean or something like that of some drama school at Catholic University, hmm. the family claims it was a gift to that guy. To that guy specifically. To Charlotte that, Delesse, yep. always digging deeper, uh -huh. bringing you answers. That so, is interesting, though. But, yep, so we'll, Everybody think, loves The Wizard of Oz and anything that comes from When I was younger, I, I couldn't say Oz, I said Boz. And that was my favorite movie growing up, Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. I thought that was about an Oklahoma football <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe. All comes back to sports ball. Quick final check, Dan, if we have Rain any time. tomorrow. Keep your umbrella on hand. Warmer by this weekend. Uh, thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. Do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you.